This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 5, Episode 40, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on all social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life. As part of the Mighty Hogstein Network on audio and YouTube on video. All right, so Washington is playing the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. Kind of a must win. Not an absolute technically because there's three games left, but then you'd have to win all three of those probably. So, yeah, and you got to – meanwhile, you got to go up to Philly to win it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they go up there and win it because those are just weird games with Philly mm -hmm. all the time. You know, the, the scores are weird. The, the games are weird. So, sure, they could win up in Philadelphia. Um, they, if anybody's going up there to the game, let me give you some Philadelphia, Washington advice when you're up there. Number one, do not wear your jersey unless you can fight real well. <laughs> okay. And number two, if you can run real well. And number three, if the Washington's winning, leave before the end of the game because otherwise, you're going to get in the parking lot and you're going to get in a fight. Okay. Not, not maybe. Yes, you will. If you have Washington DC to tags, take somebody else's car. I remember once the team doctor went up there all happy as his first time going up, came back all four tires slashed. Yep. You know, I mean, stuff like that. I had a buddy, he, um, he would buy a Philadelphia Eagles hat for five bucks, leave it on his dash. You know, we had Maryland tags. And so when people would see him, they'd start to go, what the, are you a Redskin? And he, go, he had the Eagles hat. He go, no, hell no. Because <laughs> trying to protect himself. So all of these things are true. Yeah. They're all true. So if you go up there, you've got to be a secret agent fan. And plenty of them do because they just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And one time a fan told me, he says, you know, I, we got a Redskins jersey on. We're excited. The guy in front of us, this big dude with an Eagles jersey, looked he turned around and said, listen, everybody's going to start throwing things at you if you cause trouble. And they're going to miss you and they're going to hit me. So I'm going to turn around if they hit me and hit you. So sit down and yep. shut up. And they did. <laughs> you know, they, they were yeah. warned. My buddy, grew up, my buddy went to high school in Philly. So he came up. He lives in Myrtle Beach now. And he's like, you know, hey, come on, ride with me. We're going to go. Up. We'll go up to Philly. We'll get some cheesesteaks. We'll go see my old stomping ground, stuff like that. Well, he actually he grew up in Bucks County, which is outside of Philly. But, you know, I was leaving the house and I had a Nationals hat on. And I was like, mm, probably not the best choice. Uh, let me put an Orioles hat on. That'll work. It's a little bit closer, you know, AL, NL. There's not really a rivalry. Didn't get no looks. So that was good. But, yeah, it's rough up there, man. Uh, I, I, I commend anybody that goes up there wearing burgundy and gold. Yeah, you're just going to get a fight. And who knows what's going to happen. But I mean, like I said, this is the team that booed or the fans that booed Santa yeah. Claus and threw batteries at people. And I mean, they had a damn jail underneath of the link or uh, yeah, whatever the, of the vet veteran stadium. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's all true. And I, I hate Philly's fans because whenever they come to Nats Park, they're usually the worst ones. Yeah, they're obnoxious. But, yeah, right. so they yeah, get on the train, they drink, they come down, do the game, go back home. And a lot of Washingtonians can take the train, too, and you can take do the same thing, take the subway over there. But it, oh. it is an unusual series that, that all the wild stuff happens. Um, people you know, people just – they're in a rowdy mood in that place. Now, although Oakland was much, much worse. Now, Vegas is a different animal. When the Raiders were in Oakland, that made Philly look like a church. Well, that's because you, know? you had real gangsters in there. It was. Scary. It was. I mean, what, isn't that where a San Francisco fan got stabbed? Probably. It I was. Mean, yeah. That was recent too. It was a San Fran Oakland Raiders game, and I believe a couple fans for San Fran got stabbed. It, it's. It's a rough. That's a rough, rough area. I mean, I've been to all the places. Most of the time, you can get in and out. Washington is much more tolerant of visiting fans oh, because yeah. Washington's all about visiting people living here. Yeah, it's a melting yeah. pot. Yeah, so it's, you know, a lot of those Cowboys fans that were at the game, they didn't fly in. They all live here. Mm -hmm. They just go to the game. Philly fans will come down in a few weeks for that game, 
because uh, they can get tickets uh, for that. Giants fans, a lot of New Yorkers live down here too. So, where you can catch the train if it mattered. No Giants fans are coming from New York. They ain't bothering to come all the way down for a game here, you know, as bad as this team has been in the past. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's an interesting climate um, on that. But Washington has to win this one, in my opinion. If they don't, whoo, you know, three straight, you're going to need to be Dallas, Philly again, and the Giants. It's possible, but I wouldn't want to bank on it. I think, you know, we talked about it in the last show. Obviously, the offensive line needs to get healthy again. But, Rick, they were down to their third and fourth string defensive ends yesterday because of the COVID outbreak with Montez. You know, and, and we're not going to sh- – I'm not going to shame him. I mean, look, you know, the kid had the heart issue. He he opted not to take the shot, whatever. But now he's impacted his teammates. And and we just got word earlier that John Allen is on the on the reserve COVID list. So your defensive line is depleted, and you need to get some of these guys back. Look, uh, you know, Daniel Wise and Shaka Tony, them guys played well. But, you know, James Smith-Williams was coming into his own, man. He was starting to really – ramp up the the play and he got knocked down with the COVID, um, you know, and obviously if Allen is out, uh, you know, they have Ioannidis and, and pain still. So the middle will be, should be still solid, but you got to worry about them defensive ends. They got uh, Landon Collins back who had the interception. I think they need to, I tell you what, man, I, I don't know what the reservations with him playing linebacker slash safety were. I mean, look, I get it. You were drafted and you played safety in college, but man, you know, Look at Jamal Adams, Jamal Adams for Seattle. We just saw him here a couple of weeks ago. That guy got a buttload of money from Seattle when he got traded from the Jets, and he's one of he's revered as one of the best players in the game. You know, he he basically plays that hybrid linebacker safety. Um, so yeah, just keep I'd keep landing as long as he wants to be here and play that role. Keep him in that position because you're way better with McCann and Curl back there. Um, but yeah, this team needs to get healthy. I think right now they're they're obviously on the wrong side of the cliff when it comes to injuries. They need to get some of these guys back before traveling to Philly because that's that, Philly's got a decent defense. They've got a quarterback that will scramble on you. They've got a couple playmakers on their offense. Um, this is a team that if you're not awake for is going to catch you sleeping, and next thing you know, you'll be down 21 points. And as we saw against the Cowboys, when this team is down 18, 21 points, they're not built to come back from that. You know, they're built on running the clock, you know, on the run game to milk the clock and score points. <laughs> Usually it's a field goal, but that's the way that this team is built. And that's the way that this team went on a four game winning streak. Get a lead, milk the clock, keep the other team's quarterback and offense off the field. If they're down by 18, 20, 21 points, they're not built to come back from that. Yeah. If they win the coin toss, I tell Washington to take the damn ball. Because once again, Dallas went down the field and scored on them. Yep. <laughs> so when they when they go through the games, <clears throat> there, um, right before they start the game in Philly, they play the Rocky theme because the movie happened down the street and running up the stairs and all that. Yeah. You know, and everybody's pumped. All right, go play. You know, but no, they don't ever want to do that. So once again, you know, it's like, oh, we can do the end of the half and all that. Meh. Hey, I'm not a fan of this <laughs> deferral stuff. I mean, if you win the coin, call, coin toss, get the ball, just go down and punch them in the throat and, and kill all momentum because that's when everybody's most hype. Everybody's most hype for the beginning of the game. And what better way to take the fans out of it and to take the opposing team out of it is to go down there and score. Now, obviously, Washington hasn't done that very often on their opening possession. But, you know, like yesterday, like you said, they spotted the Cowboys, what, seven three was it three points to start yeah. i mean right. there, you're already down you know and you know but we talked about getting guys back from injury we also need to start seeing some playmakers especially if mclaurin's out samuel's back and apparently he's healthy he needs to start doing something you know uh cam sims caught a hell of a ball yesterday right over trayvon Diggs. that was a beautiful catch um but you've got to have other guys you know humphreys is nice for 50 yards a game but, you know, and, and I don't know what was wrong with John Bates yesterday. You know, I sat here a couple of weeks ago and praised his game with Logan not being in there, and he just completely crapped the bed yesterday. But I don't know, man. Um, there's a lot of things that have to go right for Washington this week, but it should be a very competitive game. These two teams are built very evenly. You know, Chris, to me, Chris Samuel is one of the real keys, especially if Terry doesn't play. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Samuel has six catches this year. Um, he had, they were only targeted twice 
in 11 snaps that he played. They say, oh, the scheme and all didn't work out. Dude, this guy's supposed to be your playmaker. Yeah. Give him whatever scheme you got. Didn't they give you him know? $10 million a year to come here? Yeah, something like that. It, give me $10 yeah. million a year to, to, to catch two balls. No, they threw two balls. He didn't catch any of them. Oh, that's right. He didn't catch any of them. <laughs> or uh, he had a couple of plays. They tried to do cute runs, and the, and the blocking collapsed in front of him. Mm-hmm. So no chance. So he's had very little chance, even when he's gotten chances to do anything. But they got to get, you know, supposedly he's, you know, they were a little worried, but you've played two games now. They say nothing's wrong with his health. Then go play the guy. Go let him be himself. But the other part is Heineke doesn't seem to see him as much. You know, the play that McLaren got hurt, uh, Samuel was open in the middle. It, mm-hmm. it seems like Taylor doesn't look at him because he's not used to him. Right. And they're, you know, they need to develop a rapport, which is kind of late in the season for that. But Curtis, you know, that's, that's a problem too, I see. Is he does, just doesn't see Curtis where he is. That's one of the keys they got to get going. So I have a question for you. This is kind of a bigger picture thing. Um, we saw him, you know, Sunday with the Cowboys, he's going to be a free agent this year. And there, a lot of people are suspecting that the Cowboys are not going to be able to pay him. Would you try to bring in a guy like Michael Gallup to be, uh, uh, opposite Terry? And that way you could put Samuel in the slot and he could be a gimmick guy to run out of the backfield and catch balls across the middle. Not a bad thought. I hadn't really thought about it yet, but he's a nice player. What are you going to get in a draft? I don't know. You might get a receiver. I mean, I hate to keep spending draft picks on those guys because they never work. Yeah. Terry, Terry was a later round pick. Terry was a his, third round pick. Yeah. If they, if they try and do a first round receiver, how often does that work out for them? Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing. When you, you look at it this way, you're, you're probably going to not retain Sheriff, which I don't right. know. I, I haven't seen much from him this year, but uh, I'm not an offensive line coach. But you're probably going to lose Sheriff, and and where they're probably going to end up drafting, you know, there may be an offensive lineman out there. You know, I've heard a lot about Kenny Pickett. A lot of guy, a lot of people are excited for Kenny Pickett to come to Washington from obviously the quarterback from Pitt. Uh, from Pitt. Um, I, there's a lot of directions they can go in the first round, but you know, you can never have too many playmakers. And you brought in Curtis. Curtis is not a real number two just based off of size, but you put it like a guy like Gallup opposite of Terry. I think you've got a pretty lethal combination, whatever quarterback is, is throwing the ball. And then of course we'll have a healthy Logan Thomas, hopefully next year as well. I mean, it's surprising any of those receivers survived Dallas game because a lot of them got nailed on bad throws. They got hung out there. A lot of them did, you know, Humphreys got nailed several times. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all seem to do that. Yeah, Humphreys, Washington- got, <laughs> Humphreys got pushed out of bounds and they were going to call a 15 yard penalty, but he didn't catch the ball. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we get going, I did go by Jack and Cook's grave this week because uh, he's buried in Upperville at a little old French type of church. And it's, uh, if you go on my YouTube page, Rick Snyder's Washington, you can see the video. You know, a lot of people seem to watch it already this week. I just thought it'd be interesting because I haven't been there in years and I know most people wouldn't. You expect like a temple out <laughs> of Jupiter or something. You would it's think. Just very old, it's just a very old flat bronze plaque there. It's surprising, but it is on Rick Snyder's Washington, along with my Sam Huff uh, Memorial Tribute too. So uh, I post videos two, three times a day. If you're watching this show on there, yeah, you probably have seen them. Thanks. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, we got to get going. Yeah, I, I, I watched the Jack video. It was very good, by the way. Thanks. All right. We got to get going. I'm Rick. I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.